<laughs> you hold it by the head like this. This like a baby and then you put it down. Wait, wait, wait. Is like that this. how you hold the baby? Okay, okay. Welcome to Slice of Life. My name is Neva and on this show, I learn how to cook dishes that are significant to my guests and their life journeys. Today, I'm excited to introduce to you my new guest, Cassius. My name is Cassius. Uh, I go by they, them. I used to be a chef for quite a number of years. And then after that, I developed a very stressful relationship with food. Then I moved out of my family place and moved in with some friends. And from then onward, I started to repair my relationship with food. Okay, so uh, what are you going to cook for us today? I see a fish Chapalang here. Chapalang fish. But please explain, why is it called Chapalang fish? Uh, when my friends were first coming over, I didn't know what I wanted to cook. So I just like dug around the fridge and then I found random stuff. Okay. And then I was like, I think these random things can work. And then along the way, I improvised also. So that's yeah. why it's called chapalang fish. That's correct. All right, we're going to start cooking. Where do we begin? Firstly, cook chai po in oil. And when it is slightly brown, add sliced garlic and shallot and lightly salt it. You can see it's a bit dry. Pour one spoon of bernoisette inside. When the mixture browns, set it aside to let it cook down slowly. Pat the fish with kitchen towels before frying the fish in high heat. How you're going to put it in the fish is to hold yeah. it by the head. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. And then press the fish down. Make sure everything touches the pan and then the head. The temperature of the fish should be 45 to 48 degrees when it's done frying. Yes. Amazing. Slice the coriander into 1 inch slices. Take coriander and fry it for 10 seconds in the pan. Curry leaves, wash and dry it. Fry it and season with sugar, salt and sushi seasoning. To serve, place fried fish on the dish. Pour bernoisette over the fish. Gently spoon the garlic mixture onto the body of the fish. Then put flash fried coriander on top. Sprinkle fried shallots and curry leaves over the garlic mixture and fish. <laughs> yeah, pat my own shoulder, man. Mm. If you had to rate this dish... Do I have to tell you? Was mm. it that bad? I think like 12. 12 over 10. It's very good. I just said out of 5. But oh, okay. oh. <laughs> 12 out of 10. Oh, really. out of 5. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that you're healing your relationship with food. Yep. So what does that look like? So as you know, I am a trans person. I also identify as a non-binary person. I only have brothers. I was the only one assigned female at birth. From young, there's a lot of pressure to present and look a certain way. So there's a lot of pressure growing up to look feminine. Yeah, and a lot of times when I shop with my mom, like I'll just walk with her at like the women's clothing side, and then when she got distracted, I'll go over to like the men's side. But yeah, I do quotation marks because clothes inherently don't mean anything, but to society, they do. I wish that would change, but they do. You're healing your relationship with food. That made me think about the different pain points we're all going through. So, yeah. what are your pain points and how are you healing from it? I think we feel this way a lot because number one, like, we're not very visible. And number two, when people talk about queer people, they always talk about like uh, gay men or like lesbian women. Trans people, not so much. At the beginning of my journey, I didn't even know there were other trans people in Singapore. Seeing like what the Singaporean society is like, I can understand why it's so hard. What was that turning point for you to put down your foot and be like, yes, I am going to move up? When I realized that my parents would, would probably never like respect the person that I am, I decided when um, I saw many instances where they would disrespect me and I kind of knew like I will never be able to find peace here. 
I mean, that's the one of the reasons why I did my kitchen job. Because like, I didn't want to stay home all the time. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something that would make me so tired, I wouldn't have to talk to anyone. And I'll already not spend a lot of time at home. I've had friends who wanted to move out, yeah. but they couldn't because financially they couldn't support themselves. I'm lucky that number one, uh, I found a good place with a good price. And number two, my parents agreed to like give me a small allowance. So that was enough to cover my rent. The rest of my expenses, started my own like home-based business in order to cover those expenses. But I am lucky that I'm together with like other queer people and who make me feel safe. A lot of marginalized people, they go through so much of uh, discrimination at the workplace, you know, so much of bullying at the workplace and everything. A person like yourself, you've actually started your own business, you've become your own boss. It's called nothing special, but it's actually very special, guys. <laughs> I brought some of my granola for you to try. Uh -huh. um, I brought two flavors. So, the flavors are gingerbread. Uh -huh. And this is um, JSG, which is the jackfruit, strawberry, and goji berry. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. How would you rate it? Over five, also. Mmm. Nice. Okay, what would I rate this? Product. So that's six. Yeah, it's a six. Okay. Thank you, Cassius, for your time over here for teaching me the chapalong fish, how mm. to cook this recipe, and for these two types of granolas. <laughs> also, mm -hmm. most importantly, thank you for teaching me a lot about uh, the trans community, the struggles mm. you guys go through and everything. I think that was really insightful for me. Thank you for having me here also. I had a lot of fun cooking this fish with you. Did you enjoy your time here? Yes, I did. <laughs> six out of five. Yes, yeah. six out of five. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this conversation as much as we did, do look out for the next episode of Slice of Life. And you can follow This Is Scope on Facebook and Instagram for more content on social issues. Bye for now! Bye! Bye. Oh, I said content, I didn't say meaningful content. Yeah. It's okay, it's still content. <laughs> Sorry!